What's up, everybody? This is A Force of Nature, Spiritual Awakening, and today we will be discussing Eris in the seventh house. So this is a asteroid. I want to break down what Eris is. So I know some of you may not know what this is, and some of you do know exactly what I'm talking about. So Eris defines that aspect of ourselves that is at odds with the cultural norm. It's the part that stands against what everyone does for the sake of living out their truth. So this can help you understand your dark side, the dark side of yourself. This was referred to as the 10th planet and demoted to a dwarf planet. So Aris is known as the asteroid of discord. Okay, that's just giving you a little insight on what this is about. The seventh house in the natal birth chart is ruled by Libra. And when you think about the seventh house, the seventh house has to deal with commitment. It has to deal with relationships, one-on-one -on -one dealings with people, networking with people, but one-on-one, -on -one, you and another person too, see? So, yes, the seventh house also has to deal with legal documents. So, you really see lawyers in this house. You see contracts in this house. Judges in this house. Okay? So, this is more about um, committed relationships. A long-lasting, not long-lasting, but um, long-term relationships and marriages is seen with the seventh house. Okay? So, now, we can jump into this today. So, Iris... And the seventh house will create situations of unequal disruption of power that will stress your relationships out. You will have to work at finding a partner that will share your goals of sharing the work as well as the joys of partnership or suffer the consequences for failing to do so. So this particular placement here is saying that these people need to find a partner or they need a partner that is going to be on the same page as them when it comes to their goals in life. The things that they want to do, the things that they want to pursue, um, their partners need to be on the same page with them. If they are not, they can suffer great consequence of um, love. Okay, in a relationship or working things out in a relationship. It can become very um, annoying and chaotic for these individuals. If you attempt to follow traditional male slash female roles in your relationship, you will ultimately lose its vitality and strength of purpose. So these women and men are here to transform their role within a relationship. As a means of transforming the unhealthy relationship dynamic that keeps playing out with others. So what these people are doing is they're learning through their relationships with people. Their interactions with people. Their one-on-one -on -one dealings with people. They're learning um, what they need to improve. What might need to be changed. What might need to be tweaked. They can go a long period of time of repeating the same cycles in relationships and not understanding why this keeps on happening, why they keep allowing certain things to go on and take place in their relationship. There is a strong need to establish a solid emotional foundation within order to create healthy boundaries and sharing within the relationship. Okay, they have to make sure they're setting boundaries in their relationships. These people can find themselves very much disappointed in relationships. Okay, um, giving of themselves, um, committing themselves. Okay, so this is a person, if this was a male and a female in a relationship, say that the um, Uris person is um, a woman and she's going out with a guy. You know how they do the traditional thing. You play the woman role, I play the man role. Okay, I'm the man, you're the woman. Okay, so that's not going to really work out in, in her relationship. And their relationship is not going to work out because what's going to end up happening is that at some point, it will seem like she is taking on a male role. 
And at some point, it's going to seem like he's taking on a feminine role. Other times, she can be taking on her own role, the woman. You see what I'm saying? But it is very confusing because what exactly is a woman's role in a relationship and what exactly is the male role in a relationship? So usually in a traditional sense, the man is the provider. The man is a protector and he makes sure everything is okay and everything is all right. He makes sure the bills are paid. The woman is supposed to be a housewife. Okay, she's supposed to cook. She's supposed to take care of the kids. She's supposed to um, clean up. She's supposed to do these things, okay? So what happens in this woman's relationship is what I'm saying is that sometimes she will be caught in between doing both things, handling and juggling both tasks, the home, the family, the workforce. Him doing the same thing, the home, the family, and the workforce. So it gets real confusing for whose role is what. So it's not going to be odd if her and her man get into arguments about what needs to be done in the house and how it should be done and things like that. So her man can think that she's trying to be a fucking man. Her man can think that she has dick and balls. Her man can feel like she is trying to be in control of the situation in the relationship. And it can be very difficult, okay, because this woman is going to transform herself. You see what I'm saying? So I'm just using the woman as an example because it could be a man and, and it's his woman and things like that. I just gave you an example. But let's keep going just so we can understand this a little bit more. So it's important for the heiress in the seventh house to examine their experience with regards to how they relate to others, they have to be reflective. They have to go back over situations, analyze situations, be very analytical, pay close attention to how they are handling these situations when they are communicating, when they are speaking and talking and conversing with their partners, okay? And then they could come up with how to improve things in other situations and dealings with other people. Okay, so this might include a defense mechanism, projections, manipulations, and communication patterns. So early childhood plays a major role in relationships with the parents. Okay, so what ends up happening with the parents? It could have been some kind of setup where um, these individuals... Um, dealt with some kind of psychological foundation that affected their future relationship dynamics, okay? Um, oftentimes with this placement, the unconditional needs for love as a child was not met, okay, in their home, okay? So they were looking to be nurtured. They were looking to be loved. And now don't get me wrong, people with this placement, your parents probably very well did love you, did care for you. They did the best that they could do, but the way that this individual perceives it is something completely different. They feel like you wasn't there or you did not care. Um, you were off doing other things, more important things. Maybe you, your parents worked a lot and didn't make enough time for you. You had to go to a babysitter. Okay, somebody had to watch you. You see what I'm saying? But, but they... It, they feel like that their uh, parents, one or both of them, were not showing up in a certain kind of light when it comes to the unconditional love and the nurturing factor, okay? So now, there is a unconscious seeking for a parental figure in one's partnership, which can end up causing strife and discord due to unresolved mommy-daddy issues. These people have those issues in their lives, okay? Maybe one of their parents passed away early on in life. Maybe one of their parents walked away. Maybe one of their parents were still, uh, both of their parents, maybe they still were in the house, okay? These people did not feel loved. They didn't, and it really, really affects them. It fucks with them on a psychological level, okay? Now, what can end up happening is that because they did not receive that as a child, now when they become older and even adults and things like that, they can seek out partners that will give them that or they think can give them that love. If it's a man, he can seek out 
I'm a woman that's like his mother or a woman that can mother him. If it's a woman, she can seek out a man that's like her father or that has that fatherly tone, okay? Maybe telling her what to do or um, a little controlling and things like that. You see what I'm saying? But in... um. But, but in a nurturing kind of way, maybe. You see what I'm saying? And what could end up happening, it could be more controlling telling you what to do. Because nobody wants you to control them. Okay? But this woman here can seek out, like, you know, she wants a God that's kind of like her father. Or um, be fatherly to her. Protect her. You know, make sure she's okay. Make sure she's safe. See what I'm saying? This is what they can start looking for um, later on in life. So these individuals are being called. By the universe to transform any limitations within relationships and partnerships related to conscious, unconscious imbalance of power, as well as ongoing trauma and chaos that keeps um, going on. Okay, keeps on penetrating. These people are being absolutely called by the universe, the higher power to transform any limitations that they have, any kind of um, situations that are very difficult in their relationships. They are here to transform those things and fix them, make them better, come up with better solutions, um, better problem solvers. You see what I'm saying? Being more compromising. Okay, these people can be in imbalanced relationships that has an ongoing drama or chaos about it, okay? And please, don't even mistake it because these people can uh, go through this um, quite often throughout their lives. And this can go outside of intimate relationships. This can be even with their friends and people that they deal with, okay? Um, getting into misunderstandings, being misunderstood. People don't fully understand them. All of those things can happen here in this placement. So this happens as a result of chaos within not worked through. It can be with um, a result of chaos if it is not worked through. And then projected onto others as the difficult one. So they can be viewed as, as a difficult person. All right. Um, me, honestly, I have this in my chart. To be co completely honest, um, I am a difficult person. Period. Okay. Um, it's things that I am not going to fucking deal with. And it's things that... I can compromise on, okay? But very much difficult. Um, relationships is very difficult. One-on-one um, -on -one dealings is very difficult. Now, yes, I am a strong communicator. You see what I'm saying? And this could be the case for somebody else too. They could be a strong communicator. Um, know how to communicate. But their presence, the way that they speak at times can be a little too strong, a little too straightforward, too direct. So they can hurt people's feelings when they're not really trying to do that, okay? You got to check your chart to see if you got um these, these placement stuff, okay? So they can be um seen as a difficult one. These people create strife and discord as a result of a wounded inner child and an inability to take responsibility. This may result in not having your needs met as a child unconditionally. So many times these people feel provoked or challenged in relationships. This is the opportunity to transform what it means to share within a relationship, be it power, finances, support, or love. These people find it hard to give somebody, if they're in a relationship, equal power. If they find it hard to share their finances, they find it hard to fully support. They find it hard to completely love on the most deepest level. And why is this? The reason why they find it hard is because early in childhood, they did not receive these things. Okay, so you cannot... Um, bring to the table um, what you did not have. You cannot come to a barbecue with things that you did not fucking 
buy. See what I'm saying? So this is what I'm trying to say. So it's like these people are coming into a relationship. Okay, say that one person is full and the other person is damn near empty. These people could be coming to a relationship and they're already on fucking E. See what I'm saying? They're already empty. They don't have it in them to give because they didn't never receive it. Okay, so people could only give you what the fuck they experience. Okay, and this is what goes on. Uh, but many times these people can feel provoked. They can feel used. They can feel abused. They can feel like people are trying to take advantage of them. Okay, so now when it comes to um power and sharing that equal power, they find it extremely difficult to do. Um, And don't get it twisted. A lot of people might not want to admit this part about their selves. Me, I'm not afraid to admit it, okay? Um, giving my power away to somebody else is um, absolutely fucking insane, okay? But the thing about this placement is that you have to make room for compromise. You don't have to give your power away, okay? But you can agree to disagree, okay? You can compromise on difficult situations, all right? If you're going through something in your relationship, okay, with your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, okay, what you could do is talk it out, okay? You might not want to talk about it at the minute, at the moment, okay? But later on, come back and rectify the situation and reflect and think about how you did things so that the next time around, you don't keep making those same kind of mistakes over and over and over again, trying to figure out why do you keep doing this or why this keeps happening. Those will no longer be any questions of yours. You see what I'm saying? So now, there may be an imbalance of this sharing, which has to do with codependency and lack of boundaries. People, if you have this or know somebody with it, setting boundaries is essential here. You have to learn how to set them. If you don't set them, people don't know that they exist. So this is achieved through um, owning your role in the ongoing chaos and recognizing that the shadow work will be necessary to have healthy adult relationships, especially if your childhood experience was an extremely painful one. Okay, so these people need to come to terms with what is going on. What part do they play in the relationship? Okay, they can be the type of people that can call out your flaws a lot. Tell you what you didn't do, how you didn't do this, how you didn't do that, how you hurt them, how you did this. You, 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 you. And not taking a look at what part they play. See what I'm saying? What about them? Did they contribute to the relationship? What hurt did they cause? They cannot be looking at that. They're probably not even viewing it from that. They're probably like, no, you did this to me. Okay, so they have to look into their relationships so they do not keep repeating the same cycle. Okay, definitely these people need a partner that is on the same wavelength as them. Okay, definitely you probably need a partner that's on the same frequency as you. Okay, and moving on a high vibration. If you're moving on your high vibration, they should too. You cannot be on your higher vibration and now you're dealing with somebody that's on a low vibration. That doesn't make any damn sense. No, you have to come to terms with oh the person that i need to deal with we need to be on the same kind of page okay it's okay to agree to disagree come to compromises um talk things over okay um that's what these people need to do um also like i said they can bring chaos and drama into their relationships um a lot of times Okay, um, not so much that they're stirring the pot, but to some degree they can be stirring the pot. Um, these people are thinkers, okay, very much logical people too, very logical. Um, they're very mental. So with them using that, they have to get in touch with the emotions. Things that they say to people can hurt them. They can hurt people's hearts, hurt people's souls and break people hearts okay so they need to come up with different kinds of ways that they can speak and talk to people and they don't um hurt the other person to the core okay because words are very powerful and they do have an impact you know how people say uh 
sticks and stones may break your bones, but words don't hurt me. That's a fucking lie. Okay, it's a lie because um, you can say something to somebody right now and that shit is like you planting a seed in their head and now they watching your ass. Okay, now they peeping this and they peeping that and they got to pay a little bit more attention to what you're going to do and what you might do. Okay, so these people need to really get over um the childhood trauma if you're going through mommy issues daddy issues if daddy left and he didn't come back you know if daddy died and he didn't come back mommy went away and she didn't want to be there okay they need to get over these things because um and it's hard to say get over it okay because sometimes there are things in your life that you feel like you just cannot get over okay but anybody that has this i just want you to know that you can get through it and you can get, um, move forward okay this does not have to um, affect potential relationships just because this happened to you. You can um, really um, meditate, okay, reflect, and um, just find yourself in a place where you can um, let go of that. Because if you don't, I'm going to be honest, what's going to happen is it's going to affect your relationships and every now and then it will be drama thrown into your relationships and it will be a chaotic storm. So I'm going to leave this note to now, for now and in future videos to come I'll go into more depth into the Iris in the seventh house. I want to say Iris because it's E-R-I-S but um, it's pronounced Iris. So it is what it is. So this is a force of nature, spiritual awakening. Love is love, peace and blessings to you all. And I will see you in the next one.